fair, it says. Welcome to the second Complexity Live. This is a Human Current and Complexity Labs collaboration. We are super excited to be here. Quick overview, uh, this session we are going to be exploring systems thinking. On our last session, we explored complexity thinking. So this is going to be really great. We have some amazing guests joining us. Uh, before we do those introductions, let's just give a quick introduction. We have the host, who is Joss, with Complexity Labs. Joss, can you give a quick intro? Yeah, uh, good to have you all here. Um, it's great to be talking about systems thinking, and um, we've got some great people here. Um, we've got an hour's discussion. We hope you're going to put your comments and any questions in the sidebar there, and we're going to get to those at the end. Um, yeah, thanks a lot for joining, and uh, let's talk some systems thinking. Thanks, Joss. And I'll pass it over here to my co-host, uh, Haley Campbell-Gross. Can you give an introduction to Human Current? And Haley will be our moderator for uh, the social media and the chat box. Yeah, so if you've seen me leaning over a little bit with out of view, I'm, I'm on my laptop looking at the chat, the live chat that we have going on um, and trying to get our uh, questions from listeners in the conversation as well, um, if time allows. So we are co-hosts um, of the Human Current podcast. We are the Complexity Podcast. We talk a lot about systems thinking on our show as well. We talk with a lot of systems thinkers. And so we're really excited to uh, continue the conversation with Complexity Labs with Joss and um, other guests and um, featured leaders in this, in this realm. So we're really excited. And I'm Angie Cross, co-host of Human Current, and I'm your moderator for today, and I'd love to go around real quick if we could all just give a quick intro intro of uh, who we are. And Martin, I will start with you. Okay, hi, I'm Martin Sandbrook. Um, I don't know how much you want me to say, but uh, I, I'm here, I'm missing Wimbledon. It was 17 all in the fifth set in the semi-final when I left it, so uh, uh, you've, you're a big draw. Um, so I've uh, just a quick introduction about me. I, I've been involved with uh, management and leadership most of my career. I did a big master's course about 10 years ago and had a series of aha moments and um, finally realized that I've been treating the world wrong for most of my career. And I left that course thinking if only I'd known this 30 years earlier. And I, I've been on a kind of one man mission ever since to, to bring people through the same realization that I had. So I'm all ready to talk about it during the course of the next hour. Great, thank you for being here, Martin. And Jean, can you do a little quick intro? Um, I've been at this since um, I read Stafford Beer's Platform for Change in 1976, which dates me a little bit. Um, and I now tell people that I'm a recovering systems thinker. and. The reasons for that will probably become clear before the hour is over. So now I tell people that I'm a storyteller. Oh, I'm intrigued. Excellent. Thanks for being here, Jean. Over to you, Pedro, a little intro. Sure. Um, hi, I'm Pedro Portello. I'm um, coming to you from uh, Portugal, all the way from uh, Porto, Portugal. Um, I like to think of myself as a, a, an independent action researcher on uh, complex systems and social complex systems. Formally, I'm trained as an engineer, mechanical engineer. My uh, uh, most relevant uh, experience was in, uh, in aerospace, where I got in touch with systems, but in uh, uh, aerospace systems. But then I had an aha moment and decided to leave that life. And through a series of serendipity and the coincidences, got in touch with uh, systems thinking and complexity theory and network thinking, which um, really uh, caused me uh, goosebumps and I felt that this was the, my this was my uh, my purpose in life so here I am fantastic glad you're here uh, Michelle Ben Fisher can you give a little short intro oh we may have lost Michelle is frozen on her screen so Michelle if you when you can join us uh, and unfreeze, and then maybe you can chime in. So Michelle Bettelfisher was a past guest on our show. Oh, there she is. Can you give a quick intro? 
Hello, ladies. Hello, everyone. It's just such a pleasure to be back. I believe I was one of your early guests of your podcast. So I've been riding this complexity wave with Human Current for some time. I started on this journey as a systems thinker in the fifth grade. And I spoke a little bit about that in my TEDx talk at Dartmouth this year. Um, but I'm probably best known for integrating systems thinking into clinical medicine and public health, particularly in the areas of health policy and public health ethics. I wrote a book we may talk about just a little bit later, but um, just really excited to talk about systems anytime I can. Thanks for having me. Nice. Thank you. All right. We have a great group of guests. I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the chat that's going to be going along. If you can, if you're following along and want to chime in on the chat on where you are at, that would be exciting to see where our viewers are, are at while we're continuing on. I want to kick off this discussion and throw out a question. Systems thinking. So we often use that term, uh, a lot of us you know, are really clear on what that is, and sometimes we have different definitions of what that is. So I'm going to kick off this session with asking, what does systems thinking mean to you, and why is it important? And how about to start us off, we'll go to Pedro. All right. Thanks. Thanks a lot for, for giving me the chance to open up this discussion. Um, well, uh, uh, I struggle with the definition of uh, of systems thinking. I, I, I came to, uh, so I found the expression systems thinking coming to me from, from very different angles. Um, so after I left my, um, my job in the, in the uh, industry, I went on and did a permaculture design course where I first heard about circles, about uh, closing uh, uh, cycles. Um, then I went, I, I, I went to Schumacher College, which I, I think you guys have featured already on your show twice, where I first heard about dragon dreaming and the circular way of, uh, um, of approaching uh, project management. And then I did a, a whole uh, a course on leadership and facilitation, where we eventually also talked about complexity. And, um, and then it was like suddenly everything around me was talking about uh, uh, cycles and uh, and, um, and, and closing uh, loops. Uh, and then it was a very, it was a coincidence uh, that I found uh, the expression systems thinking, and that was the aha moment. Because for me, it was the language uh, that I was uh, uh, waiting for, a language that really um, sums up um, a lot of what we already know intuitively, uh, a lot of what our grandparents uh, know, uh, or new uh, about how life organizes and how everything that has life uh, works. And uh, it's a language that for me also it is very appropriate for times where we are, where we're in this technocratic society where we need to find uh, expressions and very concrete words that uh, uh, that define, what we are talking about. And for me, systems thinking is, is, uh, is great because it's this language, it's a very powerful language like mathematics. So that's my, my take on it. That's great, thank you. How about over to you, Gene? If you get a few systems think, few people who claim to be systems thinkers together, regardless of where the conversation starts, sooner or later it will gravitate around to why is it that systems thinking is not more broadly adopted in the world? And no, long, no matter how long they discuss it, they will never arrive at the appropriate crux of the problem because they are the problem. They all have different definitions of what systems thinking is. And because, because of that, and, and looking at it from different perspectives. The U.S. has a different thought of what systems thinking is than the European community does. And there are literally thousands of models and methods that claim to embrace the systems paradigm. And who can keep track of all that stuff? So finally, I got to a point of, of looking for some, some simplicity on the other side of complexity. I mean, 
if I approach a problem, and if I read um, Michael C. Jackson's Systems Thinking Creative Holism for Managers, which does this beautiful framework that explains why you need dozens of different models and methods, I can't afford the time or the cost of approaching a problem with 10 different experts that know all these different disciplines. So if you look for simplicity on the other side of complexity, you realize that it's all just about relationships and their implications. I don't need all the terminology. I don't need all of the specialized thinking that puts people off. You simply investigate how things are related to each other and the implications of those relationships. And you can ask people questions to get them to realize, to have an aha moment about thinking about relationships and their implications and not confusing them with lots of jargon and telling them they need to learn lots of stuff. So I have a number of examples that people have really connected with, and I seldom ever talk to anybody about systems thinking anymore. But we get along fine, and we make a lot of progress. So that's where I am at the moment. <laughs> Thank you. That's great. I'm glad to get along with systems thinking. I'm going to put my co-host on the spot next, mm -hmm. uh, Haley. Uh, what does systems thinking mean to you and why is it important? Well, I'm a very fortunate person because I feel like I didn't have to go through that that struggle in the in the beginning, like Pedro talked about, about not having the language because we started this podcast. <laughs> and, um, you know, we, we have an amazing mentor who believes that complexity thinkers can change the world. And if more people were complexity thinkers or systems thinkers, then the world would be a better place. And um, he funds our project and he's a cheerleader for what we do here. And we got to talk with experts in the field from the start, um, you know, and, and I, I got the language in the beginning. I feel like I've always kind of had the mindset. Um, in my past work, I, I was worked in the veterinary field actually while I was going through school and I wanted to know how the entire organization functioned and that's how I grasped my job better is that I can't do my job without knowing what everybody else is doing and the ins and outs of this work because I'm communicating with customers and they don't see what's going on back here and I need to be the middleman. And so I, I was thinking in systems even when I was a teenager and, and had my first job. But then I came here and, and I realized that there is a language for this. There's communities talking about this. And it's it's really, really important for especially where we are in this day and age. And the fact that we have so many problems that are so so complex and, and messy and we get overwhelmed with the ideas of how to even approach them. And I think some of the conversations that, that stick out for me during the podcast was um, on episode 54, we talked with James Grayson, and he talks about all these big, messy problems that we're dealing with today as global security. It's all, it all comes down to a global security issue, and there's leverage points within these big, complex, messy situations that we can intervene. Um, you know, just points to intervene within the system, and that was a big aha for me. And um, I feel like. This, this way of thinking can really change how we how we do things, especially in like the realms of policy and, and where the, the change really happens. Nice. Thanks, Haley. Mm -hmm. Martin, how about you? What does systems thinking mean to you? Why is it important? Um, well, I'm very uh, much in agreement with Jean about the relationship side of things. I, I thought I might it might be easier if I kind of illustrate with an, an example. So I'm doing some work in the city of Bristol in the UK, um, and a, a large amount of money was given to people in the city to take a systems approach to the problem of social exclusion, so addiction, homelessness, and so on. So they got all the parties together, formed a big partnership, lots and lots of organizations, and they did uh, systems mapping, which is where a lot of people start. And they were expecting the systems map to show them exactly there's the problem if we fix that so they were going at it with the with a, a mindset that says analysis will give us the answer and actually the systems map just left them all gasping for air saying for goodness sake this really is 
complex. Now what do we do? Well, cut a long story short, I turned up and said, oh, I can help you, <laughs> which was probably a bit vain of me. But anyway, um, I started doing training with them. And if I cut to what, what they're now doing, they're all these people right across this partnership are all doing action experiment or action research, as you call it. And they're doing this in an atmosphere of what I call systems thinking. So they've got an open mind. And the what they said about the training I did with them is you've given us a shared language. Uh, and the first thing you've told us is it's no wonder we can't find the solution because this is a complex problem and there just isn't one solution. Uh, there's lots and lots of possible solutions. Um, but the main thing they got from it was a change in their way of being and their way of seeing. And I think a lot, going back to what Gene was saying, I think a lot of arguments around systems thinking are to do with the tools. I think the underlying way of being is pretty much common to all systems thinkers. And it's about learning, inquiry, curiosity, letting go of the need to be right, awareness of my perspective, interest in your perspective and of course that leads you into story and away from uh, analysis or it allows you to do analysis but with a systems thinking mindset so you say okay i'm doing this analysis to kind of get a better picture but i'm not expecting it to answer the question for me which is what so much analysis normally does so i i have got a group of people who now well actually they I think genuine systems thinkers don't really call themselves that because you kind of realize you're never going to get there. Uh, there's a kind of uh, radical humility that seems to crop up. So my people in Bristol are always saying, yeah, we're, we're doing pretty well, but we're, we're, we need to get a lot better. Um, they're very forgiving of each other. They let each other try things out. They let each other make mistakes. Um, they talk to each other a lot. They always looking at their boundaries. So this is what systems thinking means to me is it's the inner aspect comes first, the way of being. And once you've got the way of being, then you have a different way of seeing. And what you see looks different to what it was when you were a mechanistic thinker. I'll shut up now. Oh, that was beautifully put. I love that. That's great. Thank you for that. Uh, Michelle, would you like to up on there yes well i was listening to everyone and um i have followed gene for a very long time uh, the systems thinking world journal and the like and i'm in the world of healthcare and so the difficulty we have with systems thinking is we all know that healthcare is a system and we all know that it's it's malfunctioning um, but we have, there is so much at stake if mistakes are made, if we keep trying new things. Um, so I think that that is a little bit of the difficulty of the buy-in um, when people's lives are at stake. Um, healthcare for me is indeed a wicked problem. Um, it's impossible to change it permanently. What we can do is we can incrementally improve health we can reach benchmarks, we can have prevalence rates, we can figure out who's ill and try them, try to keep them from becoming so, but we all deteriorate over time. And so it is the most wicked kind of system that um, we are fighting a battle against um, our bodies and uh, societies that are aging and trying to figure out how to keep us um, as healthy as possible for as long as possible. Uh, someone asked me, what do I think systems thinking is? And um, it is not big words. It should not be big words. But in academia, in order to, for it to be legitimate, that we do have a lot of big words that we have to use. Um, but to me, systems thinking is not those big words and it's not those images that you see. It's really taking, taking ownership of the fearlessness that is amidst the uncertainty, the uncertainty of our lives. And so systems thinking, to me, means that we're highlighting just how dynamically human we really are. We will dynamically continue to change. We will can change as a community, as, as, as a society. 
And as systems thinkers, we hopefully are there in order to help us perhaps get a better handle on what the status of that society is. Thank you. Thanks, that's great. Joss, do you wanna chime in? What does systems thinking mean to you? Why is it important? Yeah, well, we, we definitely got a diversity of uh, perspectives there, didn't we? Um, I think it's um, systems thinking is both uh, a way of seeing the world and it's a set of models and methods, um, but that we'd normally call, call like systems dynamics. So as, as a way of seeing the world, um, what you call a paradigm maybe, it's um, characterized by being holistic. So with systems thinking, we're always looking at how something, we, we, we look at something and we try to understand how it relates to the whole, which is the opposite from analysis. We look at something and we take it apart and try to understand its individual parts. And with systems thinking, we, we look at something, but then we look at it in relation to, its, to, to other things and how it functions within a whole environment. So it's always, always expansive, I think, systems thinking is. A systems thinker is someone who's always kind of going upwards to look at bigger systems and bigger systems, as opposed to someone who's doing analysis, which is always kind of breaking things down until you get to like, you know, the little atomic units. And I think, I mean, systems thinkers often identify that our society is kind of imbalanced in a certain way towards analytical reductionism. There's kind of a massive, amounts of people who can think in a very analytical way. If you go into a university, you'll get a whole part of people who are really good at solving analytical problems, are really good at understanding the internal workings of things, but they're not very good, not so many people are very good at looking, kind of asking expansive questions, bigger questions about why something is the way it is. And I think that's a big part of kind of systems thinking for me. Systems thinking uses synthesis as a process of reasoning. So it's always kind of putting things together into larger, larger holes as opposed to taking them apart. I think asking, asking those questions and using that process of reasoning um, kind of answers the question as to why, why something does the way it does, why something is the way it is. I mean, analysis is very good for answering the question how something works. So if you want to understand how a car works or a computer or a corporation or whatever, you, you, you go into it and you take it apart and you look at all the individual parts and you see how they interrelate. And that tells you, if you do that with a car, for example, that'll tell you exactly how the car works, but it won't tell you why the car works, like why a car does what it does. Or, you know, if you take a bird in an ecosystem and you take it apart, take all, take all its anatomy and everything, look at it, that'll tell you how the, the bird functions, but not why, why it is like that. If you want to understand why the bird is the way it is or the car or, or whatever, you have to look at it in relation to its environment. And that's, that's systems thinking, that's synthesis, putting things together. So I think it's in that way it's, a way, of, it's a way of looking at the world. It's a way of seeing things. Also, as Martin says, I think I, think I watched Martin's course and it was very interesting. As he says, it's, it really starts with um, a way of being, as he says, you know, a reflexivity about your own thinking, um, as opposed to analysis, which is just kind of, Reduction, reductionism just kind of posits that the world is out there and we don't really, we just need to go and investigate it. We don't actually have to think about our own thinking, our own paradigm, whereas systems thinking is very reflexive. It says, how do I see the world? And in, in that way, it's very good for giving us a kind of an alternative to our normal ways of thinking, um, showing us that there is another, a, another way of thinking. Um, and then on the level of like models, it's kind of, it's systems dynamics, really. It's looking at the interrelationships between things. It's looking at the feedback. It's looking at you know those cyclical processes of cause and effect and how they they cycle around. Um, and yeah, it's as all the other people said that it's about the interrelationships between things and that looking at how the parts um, interrelate. And you get networks and synergies and so forth. Um, so that's that's my understanding. Yeah, it starts with a way of being, as Martin says, a way of seeing the world. And then kind of from that way of seeing that world, that alternative way of seeing the world. I mean, that's, that's the good thing about it. It's, it's an alternative to our more kind of traditional analytical approach. Um, it does, it gives us an alternative, uh, alternative vision of the world in a holistic way. And then it gives us a set of models to kind of realize that, to look at things, look at whole systems in terms of um, the relations and feedback. 
Nice. And you pulled in some complexity terms in there too. And, and in a moment, I want to kind of dive into systems thinking versus complexity thinking. Uh, but before I do that, I just want to recognize too, Peter Senge, you know, one of the gurus in this field of systems thinking uh, in his in his book, I believe it's in his book, he says systems thinking is a discipline for seeing holes. It is a framework for seeing interrelationships rather than things, for seeing patterns of change rather than a static snapshot. And I thought that was a beautiful kind of description of in brief of what systems thinking is. Mm -hmm. And so with that in mind, uh, I want to explore, you know, we have complexity labs hosting in collaboration with uh, Human Current, which is the Complexity Podcast, and often we get guests on our show that identify either as systems thinkers or complexity thinkers, and every so often we get guests that say they're both. So we think it's a very interesting conversation just to unpack that a little. Is is systems thinking different than complexity thinking? Uh, are they? How are they similar? Are they not? And can they live together? So it's kind of a big, wide uh, question, but I, I think I want to start with Jean, because Jean, you've, you intrigued me with your last response around uh, a friend or not a friend of systems thinking, and you talked about complexity. So Jean, I'd like to kick it off with you and uh, for you to unpack that a little. I can't. I won't. I <laughs> It's it's tell us more about from my that. from my perspective it's a waste of time. Okay. In other words, I said that there are there are actually thousands of models and methods that claim to embrace the systems paradigm that people have developed over the last 70 years since Bertolanffy got us on this path. And and people sort of want to take and build their own model to make a method for the for, to make a name for themselves. And a lot of them have arisen for that particular purpose. And, and they've simply made things worse. I mean, if we get back to the real basics, it's all about just understanding relationships and their implications, whether, and if you take somebody who wants to describe complexity thinking and somebody wants to describe systems thinking, they're the same thing. They're just about understanding relationships and their implications. There are no things. There are bundles of relationships that we have attached labels to. And the, the comment about looking at things in context, you could, you could take a clock and you can study the clock forever. And you can understand all the pieces and you can watch the mechanism and you can see the hands move, but you can never understand the meaning of the movement until you study the clock in the context of the rotation of the earth. Because that's what gives meaning to the time units. But it's still just about understanding, okay, how does this influence this? And how does other things influence this? And then what's the difference between the novice who plays chess and the grandmaster? It's the number of moves ahead that they think about over time as they play. So that, that most people have this analytical thinking that it's cause and effect. Those who have evolved to think more about the things that things are highly related, they say, okay, if I do this, it implies this, which implies this, which implies this. And they continue to do that until they've identified all of the relevant relationships, which is why we start with situations as opposed to trying to, to model systems because it's hard to understand where the boundary is for a system. If I talk to you about um, driving in a system, am I talking about the driver, the driver in the car, the driver in the car and the highway, and the legal system that controls how we drive on that, and the people that build the roads. And, and it's just, you know, where's the boundary? If we start with a situation, it helps us understand when to stop because we run out of relevance. So enough. I've depressed you enough. <laughs> thanks thanks for that thanks for going first uh pedro how about over to you 
Yeah, I'll, I'll have to agree with with Gene. It's it's difficult to um, to separate the two. You, do, you don't have to, Pedro. <laughs> no, I know, but I, I choose to. <laughs> but I, I I agree. It's very it's very difficult to separate uh, the two. I mean, maybe it's because of my my uh, I, I still have my engineering background very uh, uh, present in me, and um, I do this exercise of trying to uh, find. Um, you know definitions for myself and even for the workshops that I do. I do. I run a couple of uh, training workshops, training systems literacy uh, over here in Portugal, and and I usually um, I like to think of of complexity as a property of the system, right? If uh, um, like systems thinking would be uh, you know the generic way that you describe the the living systems, and then the complexity is the feature that you put. Uh, uh, that you can uh, that you can put on top of those uh, systems. Um, I mean, I've 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 worked with what I thought were very uh, sophisticated, uh, uh, complex systems uh, a couple of years ago while designing parts for satellites or for or for airplanes. Um, now I realize that they are just extremely complicated. Right? Mm -hmm. um, they're extremely complicated systems that. Um, that they all that only become complex <laughs> when there is a human involved, <laughs> or when there is uh, a factory uh, worker that gets sick and doesn't deliver the part on time. That's where the complexity starts uh, kicking in. And I think it was that aha moment that I had uh, in my days in the industry that uh, tricked me into thinking there's got to be something, some better way to do. Uh, uh, project management of such large-scale uh, projects because we were missing we were missing something we were missing this uh, um, the human relationship part of the uh, uh, of the projects. Thanks, Pedro, for jumping in there, Martin. I saw your head just nodding while Pedro was talking. Would you like to jump in there? Do you have something you want to share? Yeah, sure. Um, am I on? Am I? Can you hear me? Yeah. 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 Uh, well, it was just what Petra was saying about the difference between complicated and complex. Um, but I didn't totally understand that. That was the thrust of your question. Um, I mean, uh, systems thinking. Uh, it's a horrible term, isn't it? Systems thinking. It's just so meaningless. Most people think I'm a telephone engineer um which is a really mechanistic thing um and my biggest aha moment came from jean bolton who was on your last thing i asked her is there any she's a complexity scientist a mathematician and physicist and i said to her is there any relevance in the mechanistic paradigm and she said absolutely none uh, and that was quite a killer moment for me i have to say a lot of doors closed behind me but so i think systems thinking often means a lot of systems tools like systems dynamics but if you come to systems dynamics with a mechanistic mindset you'll just use it as a more sophisticated form of analysis which is why ken wilbur is so critical of systems thinking um but if you come to it with a kind of complexity view of the world you're going to see something very different so the things that complexity has given to me in the context of thinking about systems is considering well there's a lovely question in in complexity what causes things to be as they are a combination of history context local conditions and chance all working together well, I've done an MBA and a master's. No one ever ran me a course in chance. Um, obviously, you do probability. But, you know, the idea that just because my kid woke up sick and I was two hours late for work could have fundamentally changed the whole way the business runs today, it's just not taken account of anywhere at all. So I think I don't see any distinction between complexity and systems thinking unless you're talking about you know the mathematics of complexity but what i think complexity science has brought us is some really good explanation 
of why complex systems are complex and also given us some very interesting insights into how to deal or often how not to deal with them. I'll stop there. <laughs> Thank you for that. Uh, Haley gave me a little nudge. She said she wants to chime in there. Yeah, because I feel like um, just as kind of a newbie in this realm and um, coming at it from not having a lot of experience working with it, um, but just hearing the terminology and then talking to people about it, I feel like systems thinking is a little more approachable, um, a little easier to digest for people who just enter in the realm. Um, but I think of complexity science more, I have to be a, a physicist or a mathematician to really grasp it. Um, but I can get the terminology and systems thinking a, a little better. But I do think that they just kind of like systems thinking lives inside of complexity. Um, it's not, they're not separate. Mm. That's, that's kind of my view. Thanks, Haley. And Can Michelle, I add something? Yeah. Um, I also think mechanistic thinking lives inside system thinking. I think it's really important not to see that we abandon the mechanistic just because we've gone into systems. I think systems thinking and complexity transcend but still include the mechanistic. You know, if we're dealing with a machine, we are allowed to use mechanistic thinking. Uh, you know, if we're looking at a car, we can we'll be a mechanic. But unfortunately, as uh, Pedro was saying, when human beings get involved, uh, things often quite quickly cease to be mechanistic and they become something altogether different and they become about relationships. Um, but I don't think we should say that actually there's no place at all for kind of mechanistic thinking. There is. Oh, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, with cars, that would make sense. But with human relationships not yeah or the earth <laughs> no. etc yeah thanks for that little addition and, and michelle i know you probably have something to say with this you identify as a systems thinker what would you like to share yes i actually do identify as a systems thinker i i believe that does come from um coming from a reductionist academic point of view we need to label ourselves <laughs> Um, so I tend to use systems um, as social networks and relationships in that way. And so I do think that there are systems thinkers who are, um, that gravitate towards a particular method or, or way of seeing the world. Um, I gave a TEDx talk at Dartmouth just recently in April, and I, I recounted an anecdote, anecdote about my fifth grade experience where I discovered that I was a systems thinker. Um, we were having a speech contest and I was giving a speech and I thought about talking about the fact that I had a pen pal from Austria. I'm from Portsmouth, Ohio, which is a very small Appalachian rural community in Southern Ohio. And certainly I'm not Austrian. So I thought that I was going to talk about, um, that connection I've made with someone that was miles and eons away from me. And the title of my speech was Tie a Bow for Those You Know. And so what I didn't know then was I was talking about links and ties. I was probably talking about um, homophily or the fact that we're probably not as similar as I thought that we were. Um, and so I was using that kind of mechanical terminology of systems um, network analysis, but I didn't need the terms. I was in fifth grade. It was just well enough for the people to understand that I was mapping in my mind bits of information. So for me, systems thinking is a way to map bits of information that we can come together and try to um, make sense of. Um, I'm a little strange as far as uh, my my journey into systems thinking. I'm also a humanist. I've also um, studied in the humanities, um, particularly African and African American studies, African languages and literatures. And so I'm very much from the standpoint that if systems thinking is only left to those who are concatenating data and spinning it out into pictures, I think that um, we haven't done our job. 
Um, my hope with my scholarship is to bring the, the human element back into the nodes that we're talking about, into the networks that we're talking about. And I think that's extraordinarily important when it comes to talking about healthcare because there's nothing more wicked um, for individuals than to stay healthy. Um, Jurgen Habermas um, wrote about how we really have difficulty dealing with the uncertainty of our lives. And he talked about three different worlds. He talked about the external natural world, our social world, and our internal world. Um, and then Gerald Midgley said, well, I, I'm going to add in this element of complexity of interactions into what Habermas is talking about. And so, yes, yeah, so for me, when I'm talking about healthcare, I'm talking about staying healthy. I'm talking about the complexity of harnessing all four of those worlds, the natural world, the social world, the subjective world, as well as those complexity of interactions in order for people to stay healthy. Um, so I do think that there are some that define themselves as systems thinkers that could be probably better defined as someone who was of the world of maybe more of a statistician. I think that to be a systems thinker that we also bring the, the uh, kind of uh, qualitative narrative to the elements that we are trying to break down and understand. So thank you for having me on. Thanks for that, Michelle. And Joss, I'm curious with complexity labs, there must be some overlap or, or themes that come through as systems thinkers. Have you seen any yeah, of that yeah. or what's your experience? For sure, well, I think about it quite a bit actually. Um, what's the relationship between com complexity and systems thinking? Um, actually, I'll just quickly get back to what Martin said there about mechanistic thinking and systems thinking. Um, I hear like a really good kind of saying that systems thinking argues for a balance between reductionism or, or between analysis and synthesis, between those two ways of thinking. Um, we often think of systems thinking just as being holistic, but I think that's really what it should be. It should be that kind of balance between the two because that's um, because reductionism has kind of you know positive elements to it. It's kind of one way of understanding the world, and it's very important. And synthesis holism that's also another very important way. And actually, you need both both of those ways of seeing the world to actually understand what's going on out there. You know, I don't um, I don't think systems thinking should say that you know it's all about holism. Um, and then you have the other guys in the other camp, the reductionists, and they say no, it's all about analysis. Like that's kind of Kind of stupid. It's obviously obviously about both. They're both equally important ways of reasoning about the world, and they're both equally important for understanding something. You know, if you want to understand a car, if you want to understand a city or whatever, you need to understand its parts and understand all that its internal workings. But you also need to understand its environment and how it interacts with other things and operates within its environment. So, really, if you want to get to a kind of full understanding of things, you need both of those ways of thinking. You know, and that should be part of systems thinking. So that's just getting back to what Martin was saying. But to get to the complexity thing, I think systems thinking deals with all kinds of systems. Like that was the general kind of, that was the original idea of general systems theory, that it should be, should be there to describe all systems in our universe. Whereas complexity is about systems that are complex. So some, symbols are relative, some systems are relatively simple some systems are more complex. And we had, um, I mean, if you look at it historically, we, we originally had you know, that general system theory and cybernetics and all that. Um, I'm sure they were dealing with complexity, but not in the same way as it kind of occurred. They, like complexity theory is much more recent. General systems theory, that goes way back to you know, the beginnings and the, the middle half of the 20th century. And systems th or complexity theory only really came along in the past few decades. You know, it was chaos theory in the 70s, and then network theory. Network theory was really the big part of, of complexity. So that's kind of a historical, um, historical trajectory, and I think it helps you to kind of understand it in a way as, you know, we started off with kind of simpler systems or a general theory of how systems work, and then we moved more into how these complex systems work. So complexity, for me, complexity science, complexity theory, would only really be dealing with systems that are complex. So they'd have a lot of different parts and uh, they'd be highly interconnected. Whereas systems thinking would deal with just any kind of system really. So 
things like if you think about like a subject like network theory, which kind of came onto the whole scene a bit later, you know, it's only in the past 20 years or so that we've really started thinking about networks in general. That's complexity theory. Um, whereas systems theory was more kind of systems dynamics. It wasn't dealing with quite as much kind of complexity as one of those massive networks, one of those kind of social networks. So that's my understanding of it. Complexity theory, complexity thinking is dealing with those systems that are complex, whereas systems thinking is dealing generally with any kind of system. Great and now you know why I gave up. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting that we have so many different perspectives and, and in many ways they overlap and then in other ways they don't. And so that was some rich dialogue. And we're always curious about can those live together, do they not? How do our guests relate to systems thinking versus complexity thinking? So thank you for uh, that great contribution. You know, I, I think it's, I love the work that Schumacher is doing. We've had several interviews with folks at the Schumacher College and uh, the holistic science approach around bringing in theories of you know, chaos theory and Gaia and complexity and network theory and all of those, including the mathematical uh, sciences as well, and, and really tackling big problems with that perspective, that holistic perspective. Uh, and so that's they're doing some really great work there. I'm really aware of the time. It just flies by every time we do these. I love the conversations. I actually have a list of further questions that uh, I didn't know if we would get to. And but here we are at uh, our time to wrap up. I'm wondering in, as a wrap up, is there anyone, any of our guests that want to share any last words about systems? Oh my, oh, my well, I, don't, uh, oh. I just posted a link in the notes to the current project that I'm working on if uh, anybody wants to drop by and take a look. That's great. And maybe we can throw that. We can put it in the comments section um, underneath the video. It, it um, won't let me put a link in the chat on our live stream, but I can. we can put it in the comments section. That, Afterwards, we'll add it there. That's like a, a network map on Kuma, like you're mapping out uh, perspectives on systems thinking, is it? Or? Oh, you're oh we lost Eugene. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's a set of um, relationship maps and their implications. Okay. Okay. Right. okay. There, you, you might you might find the term systems thinking in there one or two places, but <laughs> not, not very many. Thank you. And uh, Pedro, you've chimed in there. You'd like to add something before we wrap up? Yeah, because I usually get this question after the workshops. All right. Uh, this is all. This all makes a lot of sense. But what do I do now with all of this? This is like the, always a million-dollar question, right? And what I wanted to share is actually a little bit, a little bit of my personal experience with it, because where I see it has uh, had a tremendous impact was in my own personal life. Um, and when we realize that we are part of a system or and we are a system and we are full of uh, loops i mean i mean i i sure i'm surely uh, I'm, I'm full of vicious loops um that i try to look at uh, every day and every morning when i wake up um and that i i i try to look at myself as a constant uh uh, system trying to learn and trying to improve uh, myself and when you do that and when you face the difficulties of actually changing yourself or changing your own system uh, then you'll have a good idea of what it means to work with actual complex social systems uh, and you become humble when you do that exercise you become uh, humble um, so I think I guess my 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 takeaway my takeaway is when you don't know what to do with systems thinking, then apply it on your own. Wake up every morning and try to look at your own patterns of behavior and your own um, your own cycles and try to change a few and see how difficult it is. <laughs> 
That is a great example, great exercise. And it makes me think too that it, it brings the conscious level up. And Haley and I often talk about once we're conscious and we're aware, more aware, we can't go back to sleep. And so it just means further growth and further development. So thank you. Yeah, I think I think it means um, the important point about kind of experience, isn't it? Just this is not all just a big pile of theories and models. It's you should actually get experience in these things. And that's one way of learning, isn't it? And um, yeah, it can become really abstract if you aren't actually embedded in, like Pedro says, in some system or, or Michelle, like she's talking about in a hospital or in a health system, you know? Um, those really getting grounded in something like that. Uh, Pedro's, um, you know, satellite or myself, I play around all the time with computers and, and websites and those things, uh, that experience, uh, is what really kind of grounds it in something, I think. Otherwise, it can become too abstract. And um, yeah, actually just experiencing it. I think that's really important. He's done. Oh my gosh. I posted one more link to what I consider to be my greatest epiphany. Oh, no. Oh, all right. Oh, it's a YouTube. On the video. YouTube. All right. And that's a great uh, thing as well. Just going back to Pedro around what do we do with this? And so, Gene, you're sharing some really great links after we are done this live conversation and it's posted to YouTube. We will add those to the discussion. And those that are in the chat and those of you that are our guests here, feel free to also go in there and add some links for resources and ideas and further on and continue on the conversation there. Uh, just in terms of wrapping up, I'm aware of the time. I just want to go around and see if anyone has any announcements, things that are coming up for them, um, real brief around what you can be looking forward to with each of us. So, uh, Jess, I'll save you for last. I'll pass it over to you here in a moment. And in the meantime, while we finish up that, those that are in our chat, feel free to chime in with some ideas of what you would like to see covered in the next Complexity Live, which will be August 10th at 6 p.m. GMT. That's 1 CMT for those of us over here in North America. And so while you're filling up the chat box with that, I'll just uh, maybe pass it over to my co-host here around anything coming up. Um, we are going to be official podcasters for the New England Complex Systems Institute, the International Conference on Complex Systems at the end of this month. So please stay tuned with our um, podcast because we're going to have some amazing, amazing speakers. Um, we have a whole list of people that we're hoping to talk with and we'll be right there able to capture conversations. So um, stay tuned for those. We also have um, Helena Norberg Hodge is our next episode that's going to go out. She's a professor um, or visiting professor um, at Schumacher, but she also has um, a a nonprofit called Local Futures. She's very involved in the localism movement. Um, so stay tuned for that episode as well that goes out next week. And uh, anyone else have any announcements? Martin, you've posted some more, another resource there in the in the chat and we'll share that afterwards as well. Yeah, I was just uh, hearing, hearing what, um, you know, what do we do with this? And I see, get out there and try stuff. Um, you know, there's some lovely things. Uh, Leonard Cohen says there is a crack in everything. It's where the light gets in. So just get out there and open a crack. And uh, if your connection to the system is in the form of a relationship, then you've got lots of agency. You've got lots of power to do something. And uh, go and try some things out and see what happens. Because if you move in the system, the system will change. Doesn't matter how big the system is. If you do some changing, the system will change. Oh, I love that too, with the, the light and the crack. Thank you, yes. Michelle, did you have something you wanted to add? Yes, very quickly, I wanted to, I wanted to let everyone know that I presented a TEDx talk at Dartmouth this year. So please check that out. What we were talking about was um, a new curriculum change in US medical schools, and it's called health system science. And so essentially what they're now requiring is systems thinking be integrated into um, undergraduate and graduate medical school training for our um, new physicians. And so in the middle of all that, now they're learning systems thinking. Um, it's not without its uh, difficulties in implementation and figuring out how in order to do that. 
but a lot of my work is going into that. In addition, I'm co-producing a documentary on transhumanism and biohacking. So just excited to be here and lucky to be in assistance. Very cool. Thank you for that, Michelle. We'll be looking forward to that. And uh, anyone else have any announcements, anything that they'd like to share? Yeah, we, we post a uh, events calendar twice a year, and I posted a link to that calendar. Um, just send me or there's a link in the calendar where to send updates and we'll put them on the, on the, it's a world map of where events are uh, related to systems thinking and you know, cool. Great. Thank you. And we'll make sure that we get those in the chat. So those that are in our live chat also have the access to those after this. All right. If there's not anyone, if anyone else that wants to share, I guess I'll pass it over. Or Martin, do you have anything left? No, nope. sorry. All right. No, you're all right. I'll pass it over to Joss. He's going to wrap it up for us and share any announcements that you might have from Complexity Labs. And uh, thanks to all the guests for joining us. Thank you. Over to you, Joss. Sure. Sure. Uh, well, yeah, I think we um, we haven't quite figured out what systems thinking is yet, <laughs> but uh, we've got lots of different perspectives. It's it's an incredibly uh, kind of open term, isn't it? I think it just. Uh, so many different ways of, of interpreting it. a conversation in systems thinking is always kind of expansive. It just kind of get, keeps on going out. I think um, there's going to be lots of different lots of different kind of views on it. But um, yeah, thanks a lot for joining, and um, we're, we're going to do another complexity live next month around the same time, uh, first Friday or the the tenth of next month. I'm not August, sure exactly. Well, August tenth, the August second 10th. Friday. Yeah. Second Friday of August, great. And um, we'll figure out a topic. Hopefully you'll post something uh, beneath the video or in the in the comments box, and we'll figure out what we're talking about. Um, we're producing a course on systems innovation at the moment, how to use systems thinking. Um, just Martin was talking there about applying it. This is exactly that. It's using systems thinking to think about how we can really change um, large complex systems, for example, health systems or energy and so forth. I think there's a lot of kind of value from taking these ideas and really thinking about how we can um, really revolutionize or really change um, really large complex systems, um, look at kind of networks and evolution and look at them in a more holistic way. And that's, that's what we're producing at the moment. Of course, it'll be out in a couple of weeks and you can look for that on YouTube on the channel here. And uh, we'll see you all again next month, hopefully. Thank you for all for joining us. Take care, guys. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye.